Okay, so everything should be recording properly. Mic is unmuted. Everything should be ready to go. So, hello everyone. Welcome back to the last door. Uh, this is season two of this uh, game. Uh, last time we left off, we got through. Uh, we like ended it where it's like we got injected with some type of like serum, I guess. Um, and then the, uh, like, the psychiatrist and the, and the other dude, uh, went off to find us, and they found a note from, uh, I forget what his name is. I forget what his name is, but they're trying to find him, like, find, uh, the main character. So I'm not good with intros, so let's just get right into it. Oh, there is a recap, okay. Previously on The Last Door. Jeremiah Deffitt, alerted by the suicide and mysterious letter of his friend Anthony Beechworth, went in search for the memories of his past that he had lost. Deffitt discovered that in school, he had taken part in a strange experiment. Its goal was to peek through the veil, the thin line between common reality and the world of horror and madness that lies beyond under the watch of the Eye of the Bird. During his search, he was inoculated with the drug that they had used back then. The serum made Devitt's mind travel for a few hours to the dreamlike realm of the Veil. There, there, he met his old classmate, Alexander Dupre, who urged Devitt to join his cause and cross with him to the realm of the Bird. When Devitt woke up from his trance, he found himself deeply convinced by his friend's words. He traveled to, to Dupree's house, where he discovered his friend had dosed himself with a new serum, leaving, in a, leaving a catatonic body behind. This new drug was capable of transporting the mind permanently to the veil and beyond. Finally, Devitt found a vial of the serum and had it injected. He met his friend again in the veil, and together they walked through the last door, entering a world forbidden to human eyes. Devitt's therapist, Dr. John Wakefield, worried by his patient's disappearance and strange visions, had sought the help of his colleague, Professor Johann Kaufman, an expert in the cult, uh, the, in the, can't speak, in the occult, can't speak. Searching Anthony Beechworth's house, Wakefield and Kaufman found a disturbing return letter in which Anthony had tried to warn Alexander Dupre of what could happen if the door was opened. He feared something from the other side might then come to ours. Good recap. They are coming. Oh, I was gonna say, what? None of us could prepare for this. I have a feeling I know what you're doing. You're boarding up all the windows so the birds don't come in. The visions screaming were merely a warning. And now it is too late. They are coming. Oh, okay. Is this a new team? It feels like it's a new team. I don't remember these names. the bird again. Alrighty then. Are we playing as Devitt or are we uh, playing as uh, 
like the therapist. Last night I had the nightmare again, but this time it was different. This time he talked to me. I think we're playing as the therapist, but I'm not sure. It was the same unknown street, void of any sound in life. I walked aimlessly as if I were lost. Did I not go in the door? No? Then I could hear it. The broken tromping of the wet cobblestones, the familiar sound of approaching limping footsteps. Can't do anything. Then, as before, he stood in front of me, gazing unrelentlessly like he was expecting something. This time he spoke. Give me back what he took. Nothing else. Give me back what he took. No, I have fallen asleep again. What time is it? Dawn already. It is time. I like how we got an inventory and then it went away like in like two seconds. It was several months since Kaufman and I had found that mysterious letter in Anthony Beechworth's house. A letter never sent with a cryptic warning of what would happen if a certain door were opened. It bore only the name of the addresses, Alexander Dupree. We felt sure Dupree was key to finding my patient and friend, Jeremiah Devitt, who had disappeared in such strange circumstances. Troubled by the death of his friend Anthony, Devitt had visited the school of his childhood and had never been seen again. Kaufman soon conveyed to me his deep concerns and warned that I should conduct any investigation, investigations with the utmost, utmost discretion. He pursued his own research. Though his thoughts and methods remained a secret, in his last letter he requested that I visit East Hill, East Hill Lunatic Asylum in London. There were reasons to believe, to believe that Alexander had been institutionalized there for many years. I was asked to confirm the hypothesis, and if it proved correct, to gather whatever other information might arise. Alrighty then. London. East Hill. Season 2, Episode 1, The Playwright. So this is East Hill Lunatic Asylum. I hope I can find information on Alexander Dupree here. Ladies and gentlemen, don't miss the latest news in town, I think that said. Sea monster found in St. Ives. Oh, okay. So this is gonna be um, a little bit different than before. East Hill Lunatic Asylum. Um, good morning, boy. Will you give me a newspaper? Yes, sir. It's sixpence. I'm afraid I don't have sixpence. Can you make change for a shilling? I'm sorry, I can't, sir. But you know where to find me when you have the coins. What can you tell me about this building? The asylum? I've never been inside, and hope I never will. It's full of crazies, you know. Have you seen anything unusual around here? No, but maybe if you bought a newspaper. Goodbye, boy. Goodbye, sir. Boy. Okay. Uh, 
hi. A few cardboard sheets lie on the bench. Each shows a perfectly symmet symmetric design in black ink. Good morning. Ah, yes, a lovely morning. Sunlight of a quite fascinating character. I beg your pardon? The light, it makes everything look different. You see, light touches things, soaks into them, and changes their nature. It makes them shimmer and makes them die. Do you live here, in the hospital? I do indeed. My family is a generous benefactor to East Hill. They had me committed, but I don't blame them. They are just incapable of appreciating my art, or any art. For that matter, they mistake it for insanity. What are you drawing there? I'm not just drawing, my friend. I'm trying to feel the light, to translate its power to the surface of the paper. Those animals don't like it, though. They don't want me to succeed, so they take them away. They take my drawings, and they study them, and they laugh, because my eyes can see the light, and theirs are blind. But someday, someday everyone will understand. Who are they, the ones who take your art away? Ha! <laughs> Those foolish caretakers. They hide behind a big mirror where they think themselves safe, and they look at me, they observe me, they even take notes. You have some curious drawings right there beside you. Oh, you mean these? They are the only art that makes any sense here. The doctors use them to cajole, I think, some patients into revealing secret inner truths. I won't return them to the doctors until they return the art they've stolen from me. My name is Dr. Wakefield. I'm looking for a man who lived here some time ago. Would you happen to know one Alex Alexander Dupree? Uh, the name does not ring a bell. I have not been here long, though. You should ask the other patients. They may be able to help you. Some have been here for many years. Or you can ask one of the others, the brutes who keep us here. Would you happen to know where your drawings are now? I suspect they are somewhere in the archives, since I've been confiscated- Since I've seen confiscated items taken there before. You seem different from the rest. Can I trust you? I've been trying to sneak in for days now, but Miss Wiswell keeps a tight guard on the door. I even stole a key from one of those guards. You're a doctor, surely you could gain entry. If you could recover my drawings, I would be so grateful. Here, take the key with you. I must go, my people need me. Have a nice day. The large door is made of strong metal. This must lead to a secure ward of the hospital. Inmate quarters. No, okay. Okay, there's nothing over to the to the left. Well, it's a good thing I came over this way first. Because I would have had to um Go over there anyways, to get the key. Good good morning, madam. My name is Dr. Wakefield. I'm a psychiatrist. Oh my, good morning. Forgive my manners. I get so excited when we have visitors. We don't get many these days, and certainly we are lacking experts like you. What do you mean you lack experts? Every year we get less funding from the Crown. First, the doctors started to leave, then it was the caretakers. Now, very few remain. But we have a responsibi responsibility to our poor patients, do we not? We must care for them. They cannot be out, living with the proper people. We must keep ourselves safe, and our patients too, of course. I am looking for a man who used to be a patient here a few years ago. His name is Alexander Dupree. Did you, perchance, ever meet him? Alexander Dupree? Yes, there was one with a foreign name. I remember something of him. A good man, if I recall correctly. An educated man. But there was something strange about, the, about him, wasn't there? I believe it scared some of the other patients. You never know with this lot. I'm sorry that I can't remember much. There have been so many people here, it is hard to keep track. Have you worked here for long? Yes, a long time. I can scarcely remember how many years. Time goes sl slowly in here, and the isolation, the rules don't allow us to leave. I don't know what is happening in the world anymore, but we have our duty, do we not? Who else will care for our patients? May I request access to the Institute's archives? There should be some information there about the man I am looking for, Mr. Dupree. 
I am sorry, Doctor, but the archives are private. We must not allow anyone to access them without the proper authority. Many of our patients come for good families, you see, and we take great care to respect their privacy. But do not look so crestfallen, you would not find much in any case. It is a long time since they have been organized. Okay then. A bookshelf. These books are not volumes of psych psychiatry or medical science, but old serial novels for patients to read. I'm sorry, sir. The archive is off limits. Okay. A portrait of a severe looking man, most probably the founder of the institute. A serene bucolic landscape with gentle colors. Are they both the same? Yes, yes they are. An oil picture portraying Divna, patron saint of the psychiatrist, but also one of those who suffer neurological, neurological disorders and victims of incest. She was killed by her own father, who chopped off her head after she refused to marry him when her mother died. Messed up. This must be the recreational wing, where patients relax and pass the time. Perhaps here I can find someone who met Alexander while he was institutionalized. The, st the stone bus keeps the patients silent company. Okay. A sunny beach lapped by the waves of a gentle sea. A marble bust of Hygieia, Greek goddess of physical and mental health. Okay. A cheerful pastoral scene. A man wearing a worn out military uniform, lost in God knows what thoughts. The warm decoration of this room suggests a great deal of sensitivity to the patient's moral needs. Oh, they're all the same? Okay. A variety of old-fashioned landscapes that portray nature as tame and well, tame and welcoming. Yeah. Good morning, madam. My name is Wakefield. I'm looking for a former patient of this institution. The rumbling. He doesn't seem to have noticed me. Madam, if I may persist, have you been living here for long? The rumbling. I'm looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him. An eyeless gaze. I'm looking for a man that you may have met. His name is Alexander. You have upset the lady. What a strong reaction upon hearing Mr. Dupre's name. He, she must have at least met him. How can I get her to talk to me? It is odd that only this window is shuttered. The curtain casts a mottled shadow over this corner of the room. Good morning, I'm a psychiatrist, Dr. Wakefield. What an impressive institution you have here. Can I ask you for your assistance? I am looking for a former patient of this institution. His name is Dupre. I am sorry, sir. I have never heard that name before. Maybe one of your senior colleagues would know something about this former patient. Well, you can ask Miss Wiswell in the entrance hall. She has been here for years, maybe for too long. You know, we caretakers live here with the patients. We are not allowed to leave the asylum's premises. This life can get to you if you don't take proper care. I try to keep as much distance as possible from the lunatics. The asylum is quite big, but I can't help noticing there aren't many patients around. Well, apart from those in the isolation ward, it is true that there are not many patients at present, but there are even fewer of us caretakers now. We are only th we are only three for the whole hospital. But what I've been told, in the old times, the income were, uh, was enough to provide for everything we needed. A complete staff, proper accommodation for the patients, and the best doctors. But as the newer, bigger, regional asylums were built, the Crown's support was gradually withdrawn from East Hill. Soon everyone started leaving, and this is what remains. Well, thank you in any case. I will leave you to your work in peace.
There is a thin piece of metal holding the window open. The window has closed abruptly. Looks like a therapy log. Edward Roan, 27, Acute Dementia, September 25th, 1891. Mr. Roan's condition has degenerated since the last session. He is restless as if the morphine had no effect on him. For the last week, he has been obsessive, troubled for reasons unknown. The patient's dosage has been doubled to no effect. 29. Dr. Weedall has been attacked and bitten in the face. Four men were needed to subdue the patient, Mr. Roan. Three markings were found on his body upon examination. Self-harm is a possible cause. October 3rd. Mr. Roan is getting better day by day, both physically and mentally. His habits have changed considerably. He now shows an interest in religion and spends his time murmuring prayers, albeit ones unknown to my colleagues and me. It's my colleagues and I. A glass jar full of transparent liquid that may or may not be water. There is a coin resting at the bottom. Now my hand is wet. Okay, same thing. Okay, again, same thing. Okay, I just want to make sure. Be thorough. Dark as the room is now, I can see through the false mirror. There is a man on the other side, heavily restrained, desperately trying to free himself. He has an expression of unbearable horror on his face. Hmm. Okay. An old key. Apparently it has been filched from one of the caretakers of East Hill. A thin piece of nickel used to keep the windows open. Okay. Half a shilling. That is six pence. There we go. That's how I get the newspaper. Okay, it's a good thing I, um, I looked at it because I would have been confused. Oh, I can't do the, like, the fast thing anymore. Boo. Like, I can't, like, double-click. That's annoying. That seems like a huge oversight compared to the first game. I would like a newspaper. Six pence, is it? Here. Thank you, sir. Today's Illustrated London News. The first headline is about a grim case. Scotland Yard keeps its silence about the ambassador of Turkey found dead last Saturday under mysterious circumstances. Our sources suspect he may have been murdered. The second, sea monster found in St. Ives. The remains of a serpent from the deep were found on the beach early yesterday morning. It is suspected they come from a seaside museum in Spain, destroyed a month ago by the sea waves during a terrifying storm. There was another drawing advertising an operetta called Love Brushstrokes. Okay. Hmm. Oh, now I can go faster. Why, thank you kindly. How thoughtful you are. There we go. This is the hospital archive where a record of each patient must be stored. If Mr. Dupree was really committed at East Hill, his file should be here somewhere. The portrait of a restrained patient surrounded by caretaker t caretakers and a doctor. It has been a long time since this desk was last used. It is covered in discarded papers and pens in a noticeable layer of dust. The drawers are all locked. Okay. The cabinet contains many documents detailing the treatment of patients ranging from two decades ago, ago to last year. His file is right here. Dupree, Alexander, room 108A. All the files are missing. It is as if they had been torn out. 
Only a little piece of paper remains with an address written on it, Paul Street 26. Could that be where Alexander lived before he was committed to the hospital? Paul Street. I should follow this new lead and see if it takes me somewhere useful. Hey, I wasn't done! Let's see, all the dates of this cabinet prior to 1870. I'm looking for a more recent file. A metal locker, a small sign reads, seized objects. That's how I get in there. It's locked, yes. Some personal effects, probably sent in by the patient's families, but deemed unsafe by the caretakers. One of them is a stack of thick sheets of paper, carelessly bound together, bearing the drawings and paintings of a troubled mind. Take them. There we go. Only a couple of pictures in their frames. Ready then. Those are all locked. Can I get in here with these? No? Okay. Is there anything else on this shelf that could be useful? No. Okay. So let's get out of here. Well, maybe I can't just do it from the outside. Or the inside, I should say. Okay, let's go give the drawings to the dude then. I have your drawings, my dude. Here, are these your drawings? Great wonder, they're back. Someday they will understand light and shape as I understand them. Thank you, friend. If you want, take these cardboard sheets. Thanks to you, I have no more need of them. Thank you, sir. Okay, what are these exactly? A few folded cardboard sheets, each one with a large symmetric patch of black ink in the middle. I have heard of this technique, but I always thought it an eccentricity. Patients are supposed to see them. See in them the deeper causes of their ailment. Oh, I get it. This is the first card. The shapes look organic. Almost like insects. I would say this could be a face. That's like the mask. I can't open that heavy door with this. Okay, so let's go to Paul Street. I feel like I'm done here. I don't think there's anything else I could really do other than like really talk to that lady, but I don't know how that's going to be useful. Th this door is number 24. I'm looking for number 26. Okay. Number 26, this is the place, this is the place I was looking for, but the door is bricked up. I must find another way in. Okay, before I like look at the window, I just want to look around. The ruins of an old chapel, apparently destroyed by fire. Wait. The windows are so thoroughly cemented over that it almost mixes with the facade. Okay. I didn't think it was going to be that easy, so I just wanted to check. Mess of wooden planks and the remains of benches and chairs. I can't take any wooden planks with me. There was someone on their knees praying, their faces covered by a hood. There's the bird. An improvised altar covered in candles. With this candle, I could light my way through the dark. like this hole leads to the building next door. At least I'm walking faster than before through the darkness. This must be the interior of the bricked up building I saw on the street. Mr. Dupree's former residence. I cannot tell who is depicted in the portrait since it is so badly damaged. It seems someone crushed it into the floor. 
The door is bricked up. There is something among the ashes. It is a, it is a piece of paper. It looks like some kind of message, but there was only one half here. The paper has been carefully burnt. Righty then. Military medal. There was a relief of Her Majesty the Queen and several pieces of metal engraved with the names of battles unknown to me. I'll take this with me. Maybe it will mean someone to one of Alexander's fellow patients in the hospital. I had a feeling that was going to be the case. There's a piece of paper on the table. Oh, I didn't take it with me. The paper shows some seemingly random letters. It seems that it, as if half of it's, it is missing. Half of it is missing. This is strange. I have put both halves back together, but some letters seem to be missing from the right half. The message does not make any kind of sense. Few books remain in the shelf, mostly doubtful treaties, treaties in chemistry and chemical and alchemy, alchemy. Can't speak. Among the titles are Trithmius's De Lapide Philosophico. I'm not even gonna bother with these titles. I don't speak like Latin or French or whatever this is. The anonymous work, whatever. Mysteries of the Worm. Okay, whatever. Large metal safe. Okay. One man in high rank uniform. He's missing an arm. Okay. I don't think there's anything else in here worth my time. Not at the moment anyways. I was going to say, is the man gone? The wooden cross remains almost intact. Okay, let's go back to the hospital then. Hall Street, it ends here at this corner. Let's go back into the um, hospital and see if I can give it to the to the lady. Unless I give it to this dude. Excuse me, sir. I cannot help but notice your uniform. Were you in the army? Leave me alone. You do not want to talk to a coward such as myself. This, me this medal, I had one just like it. Oh, this medal, I had one just like this. Got it after the battles of Lang's Neck and Majuba Hill in 1881. A decade ago now. For distinguished conduct in the field, it said. What a farce. So, you were in the army, as I thought? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Wakefield. Sergeant William Conghill, Her Majesty's Sixth, L Sixth Light Infantry. Are you another one of those alienists? Do you doctors not realize the cowardice cannot be cured by your arts? Why are they keeping you here? The doctors say I suffer from a nervous disorder. I believe this is the term for when they themselves, with all their learning, do not know what to say. But I know the true name of my sickness. It is pure cowardice. I am looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him? His name is Alexander. Yes, I did know a man by that name. We met briefly. He was here when I arrived. What do you know about him? He was a proper lad, educated. He listened closely to the stories of the other inmates, but he kept his own to himself. We talked a lot. He was very close to Miss Cohn, too. I think they got here at the same time, but when he left, he did so alone. I wonder what has become of him since. Who is this Miss Cone? 
He is a patient here, the lady with the tempestuous character. You may have encountered her already. She has not been the same since Mr. Dupree left, you know. She always sits to the side, alone and silent. I doubt you could talk to her at all, even if you tried. She sees things, or at least she thinks she does. What did you talk about, you and Mr. Dupree? We talked about my time in the South of Africa. I don't like to talk about that, but he somehow made me want to. He was persuasive. He was very interested in one specific story, almost obsessive about it. He wanted to know every little detail. Could you tell me that story? I'm trying to find a patient of mine who has gone missing, and this could be my only hope of finding him. I don't like to relive those memories. A missing patient, you say? I... Alright. Maybe my story would be of some use then. It happened during the Battle of Majuba Hill. I am sure you have heard of it in March of 81. The attack of the Boer army had taken us by surprise, and our regiment was forced to split up. We quickly found ourselves alone, just a few men lost on the barren plain, but I don't want to bore you. No sir, you certainly aren't. Please continue. As I said, we were few, and we were sure the enemy was lurking out there. In the cold air of dusk, a thick fog formed quickly, masking everything around us. We could barely see each other. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize... I had to move, I didn't see myself. Then the others started to disappear in the fog, which was getting thicker and thicker. I could still hear their footsteps for a while, then nothing. I called their names aloud. Oh, come on! I'm not able to read this. I felt something in there, not far. A murmur of a beating, something alive, waiting. I couldn't help but walking towards it. All of a sudden, my feet felt something in the mud. A body. They were all there, dead. Only Captain Skid was missing. Then the mist, then the mist cleared out. What had happened? I never knew for certain. I didn't see anything, or if I did, my mind refused to bear such memories. What happened to Captain Skid? When he finally regained consciousness, it was like someone else looked out at us through his eyes. I guess whatever happened affected him, changed him. I know he came back to London. Mr. Dupree asked me of his whereabouts. Maybe he tried to contact him to hear the rest of the story. He was quite preoccupied by it. Hmm, do you know where I could find Captain Skid? The last I heard from fellow veterans, he had lost himself to a frenzy of alcohol, opium, and bad company. This downward spiral led him, as many others, to a wretched nadir. A dirty hole deep in St. Giles' rookery, known as the Crimson Nest. Mayhap you will find him there, alive even, if you are lucky. Here, this is a picture of a regiment, you can see him there. St. Giles. Already then. Sergeant Kong Hill? Please leave me be. Memories of war are painful. I don't want to, I don't want to remember them ever again. Okay, bye. Oh, come on. This is the slum of St. Giles. The Crimson Nest shouldn't be far. Isn't this the beginning part? With the dude? Wait, I didn't. See if I can check this door. Okay, I can't. This is where it's like, give me back what he took. Yep.
It doesn't look like anyone on this picture. I doubt it has ever been his. Give me back what he took. He said it in my nightmare. This man, he looks like the man from my nightmares. He is blind in one eye. The empty socket glistens in the lamplight. He seems to want something from me. In my dream, the man had said, give me back what he took. I don't have anything. I don't have anything for you. What? Did I miss something? The soft glimmer of this street lamp casts a comforting glow on an otherwise empty street. Wait, did I not combine them? I don't know what he wants. Give me back what he took. What who took? Okay, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna look up to see what exactly I'm missing. Apparently I missed something at Paul Street. Where did I get, where do I get that? I don't know. Unless it has something to do with the papers. Oh, it does. I get it. I'm just really dumb. I get it. It's a code. I think. Maybe. But isn't it like an M or something that's lit up? I don't remember. Hold on. No. Hmm. I don't understand. I thought maybe it would have been like a code. I don't know where to get the code. God dang it. Ah. Five. Four. One. I wouldn't, I don't know where to get the code. I'm confused. It is empty. Wait, this is not a safe, but an entrance to a passage. It is completely dark. The only way to know where it leads is by crawling in. I don't know where to get that code. It's very confusing. Is 
Like, I'm looking to see where I would get the code. There is no code to get, so I'm just confused on how it, how it would work. Unless I'm just supposed to, like, turn it until it gives me, like, the click, but I'm not sure. They would tell us if you are fit, Captain. I don't know what the hell that was, but okay then. Mathematic formulae, written fast and carelessly. Some of these symbols I have never seen before. Oh, I thought maybe I could do that, but apparently not. A list of numbers. It looks like some kind of calendar or a timetable. Can I not look at it? A strange machine built of wood, steel, and glass. I wonder what its function could be. There is someone sitting here wearing a horrible mask and a yellow robe. He is not moving. Don't you dare jump scare me. It is only a yellow robe. There is no body inside at all. What could be the meaning of this? I don't like that. Get the hell out of here. Give me the hell out of here. I hope there was nothing else in there, otherwise that would suck. Oh, do I give the mask to the dude? That that would make sense. I was gonna say it's like, what does this want me to do with it then? He looks at he looks to the mask for a second, only to stare at me again. Give me back what he took, he had said in my nightmare. Wait, that's not what I need to do? No, I have to go back to the, the asylum. Okay. Some of the some of the puzzle design is a bit confusing because I would have had no idea what it would want for me. Like I would have just been running in circles like a chicken with my head cut off. There's the isolation ward for you this time. The face of the playwright. Okay. The man is striking the glass strongly with his fist. His expression is of pure hate. I don't think he can see me, but I feel that somehow he knows I'm here. Okay, now I need to go out to the isolation ward. Yeah, I would have no idea what this would want for me. Like the inmate headquarters, I guess, is what it's called. Oh, you're up now. That poor woman. They must have taken her to the isolation ward. Okay, come on.
Uh, do not talk to this guy. There we go. That's two. Three. Did I do that wrong? Oh no, I did it in the wrong order. supposed to speak to me. I'm not supposed to speak to him. I don't understand. I hate this so much. This is annoying.
I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, I'm just gonna leave for now. Because I don't know what I'm doing. An old pendant on the dresser, it looks valuable. Now let's go back. Like, I hate this. It shouldn't be like, oh, you have to do it, like, specifically. This is annoying. At this point, I'm just going to talk with him because this is a waste of time. Like, it says it's for a secret, but I don't exactly know what it wants from me. Unless I'm supposed to, like, put it on. No? Hold on. This is annoying to all hell. This is a waste of my time. Like if I don't get it in like the next like minute or so, I'm not gonna bother with this secret. It's not worth my time. I don't care. I don't care. Hello, my name is Wakefield. A blood of butterfly is not what it seems. Excuse me, what butterfly? It was more after the scarab. Is this the butterfly you talked about? It displays its wonderful colors, fills your eyes with awe, but this is only a show. Beyond the veil, its body crawls on the dirty ground, hides in the darkness, and transforms another of its lies. So what would this be? Its dark body creaks and rustles with its blind movement. Slowly, step by step, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer. What about this one? It will come, whatever you do. It will cry out loud, looking at you from everywhere at the same time. What about this one? Hmm, him. Him? His mask, my mate from the other room, used to scream at night. Always told us he could feel something under his bed, a presence, an eyeless gaze. You like this? No. His mask, okay. Okay. An expensive looking piece of furniture, there is nothing on it. An impressive painting of a lovely maiden, it is equipped with a fitting magnificent frame. Is that something outside the window? Like looking in? Oh, I thought there was something on there. There isn't. A mirror covered in dust, I wonder what the things it has seen in this room. Could this be one of the room? Could this be the room of the patient's mate who is afraid of a presence under his bed? 
This door is bricked up, but why would they do such a thing? There was something written on the wall. One of them came last night. I knew what it actually was because of the, because of the sign it carried. The sign of the eye. I killed it and hid it well. If more come, they will not find their eye, their friend nor its eye. I doubt anyone has slept in this place in a long time. Probably right. The window is still too. Almost no light can reach the room. Okay. Seems one of the towers is loose. Cannot get it out with my bare hands. It is too heavy. Piece of metal. There we go. There was something there, half buried in the soil under the tile. Bird. There's a long dead bird, just feathers and bones. It is holding something in its beak. The eye. A dirty and horrible deformed glass eye. Oh, I understand. Give me back what he took. It's the eye because he's blind in one eye. I get it. I think, anyways. Let's see, what is that outside the window? It looks like something's staring in. It will come after us. The door is closed for good with bricks, like they were pretending it never existed. They only didn't even try to disguise it. A bunch of bricks. Either the construction is recent and not yet finished, or they were in a hurry to seal this room. The door is shot and locked. There is no way to open it. It is eyeless, but not blind. Yeah, I don't know what that secret the guide is ta talking about with the dude in the room. With this guy. I have no idea. Okay. So let's go back to, um, to the place. And give the dude his eye or whatever. I'm pretty sure this is what he wants. Yep, there we go. I was gonna say, what? This must be the Crimson Nest. I have heard of such places where people lose their minds to opium shipped from the Orient. I never thought I would set foot in one. Oh, okay then. Please, wake up, dear. Please wake up. Then Dick complete. An addict, completely asleep. Did I say addict? Or uh, a dick? What is the matter, madam? My husband, my husband, he is unconscious. Please, dear, wake up. I am a doctor. Please let me see him. I'm sorry. He's not breathing and he has no pulse. Your husband passed away hours ago. No, 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 it can't be. Madam, I'm late. This time I couldn't save him. What do you mean this time? I discovered my husband's addiction to this hellish drug they call opium months ago. At first I thought he was sick as I saw him grow thinner every day. Then I discovered he was visiting this place. I am very worried. I tried to dissuade, or I was very worried. I tried to dissuade him, but he wouldn't listen. The addiction was stronger than he was. At times, he was away for days. I would come here and find him passed out. The only way I could wake him was to put these smelling salts under his nose. Now, it's too late. 
Here, take the vial. Maybe you can... Maybe you will be in time to save another soul from this curse. A man with a lost gaze, his mouth open. I'll leave you alone with your husband. Okay. A woman looking at the roof with her eyes going white. She's muttering some ramblings. The musician is intoxicated with the drugged smoke that fills the air. The repeated arrangement gives the sensation that time flows slowly. A short-haired woman smoking without worry. Hello, I'm looking for a man who I believe frequents this establishment. A war veteran from the south of Africa, Africa called Skid. He is riding on a slate. I, uh, can you understand what I'm saying? He has written, can't hear, so I suppose I should communicate with him by running on the slate. Looking for Captain Skid. Don't know. He doesn't know the captain's name then. This The man is curled up under a blanket, trembling as if he was freezing. It could be an effect of the drug. This young couple seems to have come here together to just to enjoy this despicable vice. Door is locked. I'll give this to the dude. He yeah, has written something else. Object of value. What does he mean by that? Pendant. I do not think he likes me much. I should hurry. Hmm. A table with several opium pipes on top. Some of them have been used recently. A Chinese screen with floral ornament. This Captain Skid. No doubt, he is unconscious, but he still breathes. Okay, give him the smelling salts. <gasps> What's the matter? Who let you in? Get out! My name is Wakefield, I need to talk to you. Are you Captain Skid, Her Majesty's Sixth Light, Sixth Light Infantry? The title belongs to me no more. Who are you, and what do you want from me? Leave me alone with my misery. A soldier that used to serve under your command told me I might find you here, William Conghill. Yes, I remember him. We served together. I had ma made many mistakes trying to forget those years of my life. Now I am afraid of those memories will follow me to my grave. I'm looking for information about a man called Alexander Dupree. I used to know a Dupree. Is it Dupree? Dupree? I don't care. He was a he was not a man, but a fiend. What do you want with someone like him? There are certain secrets that are better left undisturbed. A patient of mine had disappeared. Alexander is the only one that may know his whereabouts. It is tr if it is true that Dupree is Involved in your patient's disappearance, then I am afraid that matter is out of my reach. Yours too. Now please leave me alone. Have you ever heard the name Jeremiah Devitt? I must find him. Devitt? No, I have not. I found your medal. It was in a house on Paul Street, th door 26. You were there, right? You think you know what you are doing, but you cannot imagine what you are getting into. I am asking you for the last time. Leave and forget this matter. I will not leave until I find the answers I'm seeking. Tell me what I want to know. You fool. That's... Ah, for the devil's sake. Alright, if you want to ruin your life, you are free to do it. What really happened on Majuba Hill? Sergeant Conkill told me the story, but his details were confusing. I'll never be able to forget that day. Nobody knew what really happened. Command decided that we must have been ambushed. Now I know better. There was something in that fog, something that did not like us entering its domain, a sentinel of some sort. That thing is what killed my soldiers. How did you meet Alexander? 
I was in the veterans hospital recovering from an illness unknown to the physicians, an ailment of the soul. Dupre managed, me, managed to contact me there. He wanted to know my version of the story, what had happened to me in the Battle of Majuba Hill. Do you know why he was so interested in your story? I did not know immediately, but with time I realized the truth about what happened to me was important to his activities as was I myself. But if you think he tricked me, you could not be more wrong. I wanted to enter the dragon's mouth. I burned with a need to know. Uh, tell me about 26 Paul Street. Inside that house, I saw a machine still operating. What was that? A uh, machine? I do not know what you are talking about. That was just one of many places used as a base for Alexander's activities. The only one whose location I was allowed to know. What was Mr. Dupre doing then? You really do not know, do you? Have you ever heard of the playwright? For the sake of transparency, I'm just going to say I've never heard of it before. I do not know what that is. There goes the music. As I imagined, you know nothing. Dupre is not alone. He is but the peak of a pyramid, a vast group in which powerful people take part. A society acting in secret, ruled by a single sacred law, see that no one knows. I was part of it. Dupre himself recommended me. We gathered every month. What we saw, you cannot imagine. A curtain of normalcy protects the mind from something, an outer something. The fog of the veil protects, protected us. But through the veil, we could peek out into the abyss. We could know of the unspeakable shapes that ride behind a black nothingness entirely full of horrors. We could never cross the threshold. What we saw was forbidden. Look at me, forbidden. I could not bear it anymore, so I ran. I ran and I hid from them. It was too late to run or to forget. I must go back to East Hill and try to talk to Miss Cone. If what the captain said is true, she must have been one of them. She could know where to find them. Okay. I wish I didn't have to go all the way back through what is happening here. I cannot do this anymore. I don't care. I just want us to be together. You know, it is too hard. I don't feel free. I know, dear, I know. We will figure it out. How, how are you home so early? I knew all along. How could you? You know, you never loved each other. Silence, you have no honor. And you, what do you have to say? Why, I've given you everything. You wouldn't understand, I... Enough, you will leave in the morning. I won't see you ever again. I'll wait for you at dawn under the old windmill so you can try to recover what little honor you once had. I'll be there. Well, that was weird. Where am I? 
Must have fainted. What is this? Where am I? Cannot see outside, clearly. Matchbox. This could be useful. Yes. An old piece of furniture. There are marks in the dust on the floor. It looks like this chair has been moved recently. Shifting the chair revealed a small dark hole in the wall. Of course the door is locked. This door, The door is shut for good and it has no knob, no keyhole even. The match is too short. I cannot stretch my hand in farther either to see what lies beyond the hole. Okay... There was a blanket on the bed. They take the blanket. I'm taking a shred of this blanket. I could swear I saw a pair of feet in there. Who, who is there? We have met before. I cannot see you. Who are you? Do you not recognize my voice? No, I'm sorry, I do not. Do you know what this place is? It's the starting point, the first place to look. But who are you? What are you doing there? Remember this, I will not be here forever. Darkness will light you away. Stay out of the light. Then I will disappear, and you will be alone in the end. I don't understand. Tell me who you are. I can hear breathing behind the wall. The blanket is now ruined. Not see outside clearly. Okay. So what does this want for me then? Um I don't know. I have to use the blanket on the window though. I must take it with me. Yeah. Then I cover it up with the blanket. I was gonna say, he said he had no use for it. Oh, this room extended. That's weird. I wasn't able to say anything. Up blood. That's creepy. Tell me, why are you doing this? Is it because you care about your patients? Or out of scientific curiosity? Is it for your pride? Because it is your professional responsibility? Or is it because it is the right thing to do? Why are you doing this? <gasps> No, damn it! The right mind leave rune. How are you feeling? I feel dizzy. What happened? Where are we? At my house. I went to East Hill to meet you and found you inside one of the cells, unconscious, your clothes stenching of opium smoke. 
I had brought you here. You, you've been out for a day and a half. I, I think it's coming back to me. I was at one of these opium dens. I might have passed out after breathing that dense smoke. Listen, I have much to tell you. My investigation unearthed a great deal of new information. Alexander was indeed institutionalized in East Hill, but his files were missing. I managed to track down a man who knew him. He told me a story you would not believe, and... There was this woman, a patient at the hospital. She was completely out of her mind. She attacked me. What is happening to those people, Kaufman? How is this Alexander related to Mr. Devitt? I think this patient... Miss Cohn might know how to find Alexander. We must go back there and talk to her, whatever it takes. I'm afraid that would not be possible. Is she dead? What do you mean? Fine Cohn is no longer at East Hill. She escaped last night. God almighty. Do not worry, mine friend. I think I may know where she is hiding. Get ready. We must leave promptly. They are coming. They are letting him in. Now that the door has been opened, they are coming. FBI, open up! Uh oh. Playwright was created thanks to the generous support of players who participated in the crowning crowdfunding campaign. The adventure continues in episode two. Okay, so I think I'm gonna end it there then, um, because I've been going for a while now. Um, this these um episodes seem to be going on for a lot longer, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just really hard to edit. So I might split these episodes into like two parts, like per. So this is probably going to go on for a lot longer than the first game. Because the first first game, each episode was about an hour long, give or take. And um, I feel like I've been going for a lot longer than that. Um, maybe not, I have to check. Um, but yeah, I might split these episodes into two parts just to make them more consumable. Um, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime... Thank you everyone for watching. I'm not good with outros, so I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye!